Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. So today, I want to talk about the concept of the... Oh god, what's happened? We've had a collision already. Well, basically, I want to talk to you about the concept of the Orbus, and what it actually does for DRF inside our little faction. So you can see we just had a collision with it, some damage might have occurred. Oh god, we've ripped a load of wells off. Bloody drone drivers, eh? So now that that collision's out the way, I've spawned in a fresh Orbulus. Now the whole idea of this ship is to take in ore, produce parts very quickly, and be a central hub where drones can come in, dock, take components, and go off and build in the local area. So it's very simple. Now the first questions I got about it was why Aaron didn't you stick some armaments on it? You could fit some giant cannons on the side and you could really defend itself. Now as soon as you start sticking weapons to this, of course one or two weapons would be fine, but five or six or maybe massive cannons like someone was saying, you present yourself a bigger target, you're attracting fire from an enemy ship. If someone's scared of that object due to its firepower, they're going to try to target it first and eliminate it before it can do any damage. When this enters into a fight, it does one thing and it does it very quickly. As soon as the bullets start flying, it seals up its doors and it jumps out with all your supplies and your refinery systems online. So as that battle's taking place, this is refining, doing ore in a different sector, and when the battle's over, if you've lost it, you can retreat back to it and rebuild just as quickly. If you've won the battle, you can haul this guy over there and start grinding down them enemy vessels. So it's a multi-purpose ship, and that's what I really like with drone ships, having them so they have multiple functions. So let's move into the hangar bay on the side here. So the hangar bay here is accessible from top, bottom and all sides. The reason for this is when there's a lot of people on a server or in your particular PvP team, you have a bit of congestion when coming to the main refinery ship. So we've got one of these ports on either side and it means with all the doors and ways of accessing whatever angle I come up to dock, I can just simply slip in here, dock with the ship, grab my supplies, and off I go. Of course, from the central cockpit, we can then close up all them blast doors and protect the ships inside. But now you're probably thinking, Aaron, there's lots of areas that are open. Now, the reason for this is, with a sort of ship like this, you need to be quite adaptable. You need to add things to it as you start processing. Maybe you need another reactor, another junk drive, another cargo container. So there's space, there's ample space in here for more cargo containers, more junk drives, as the build progresses. An often problem you see with a lot of refinery ships is they build the ship and they limit themselves to the size of that ship around it. With this, we're not limited at all. There's plenty of space in all of these little nooks and crannies, especially the sides for more components. Perfect. Now let's talk about its maneuverability. Of course, have you seen this in Colony Wars? It doesn't maneuver particularly well. Look at that. It's a lost inside here. But the reason it doesn't maneuver particularly well because it was never designed to maneuver. Wow, I'm, I'm lost on all planes now. This is not the situation you want to be in. So we're coming through here. We have the flat plane in the center. And you can see Aaron's even getting lost in his own ship. This is how, how mental this is. Okay, so it's this way. There's the cockpits. So we've got the cockpit for the grinder cockpit on that side. We've got the cockpit for the welder there. It's a simple. You've got forward and backwards. You don't need to complicate any further than that. There's no oxygen supplies on board. There could be a med bay in here in the future. So when it jumps away, it would be pretty damn useful. But for the current moment in time, we have a survival kit tucked away in one of these secret areas below. That, that maybe if you find this design, you'll be able to find where that survival kit is actually located. Now coming around the side, you'll notice these large drums. The reason for these is protection. These offer a lot of resistance to missile launches. So for instance, if it's about to jump away and it has a hit on one of these areas due to it, well, due to missiles focusing on the important components, they'll target the central refineries and other parts first, or even the assemblers and grinders on the side. So these will absorb a little bit of the damage. Now coming to the side, we also have merge blocks on either point. Now the reason for these is it's not very maneuverable. It's really slow, really bad. It's, well, it's, it's okay at turning, but it's really slow moving backwards and forth. So then merge bots can be connected to larger ships and it can be transported closer to the action. And like I said before, if you need to grind down an enemy fleet after you've destroyed it, you just park this thing nearby, you get your landing gear on another ship, and you just feed it into the drone micro hive. So I'm not too sure of the name for this ship at the moment in time. I'm stuck between the Orbulus and the Micro Hive, but let us know in the comment section below. 